I really want to thank you all for, for this acknowledgement. It's very humbling. It is exciting to me and a lot of us old timers to see how much Rural Cap has grown over the years and how much good they have done in our communities. Yes, I was pregnant in 1965 and the executive director of Rural Cap came to the hospital where I was in labor <laughs> and asked if I could, just couldn't come for an hour or two to the meeting. <laughs> and then go back. I, I didn't make it to that meeting. <laughs> and my, my youngest daughter was born and, and I'm glad I didn't go. <laughs> I was the Rural Cap Board President in 1969 when we had a real battle over whether there, there was a 29-year-old young man, the former mayor of Yakutat, whether he had enough experience to be hired for Roll Cap Executive Director. At that time, and I don't know what the composition of the board is now, but at that time there was five members on the board of directors from the state state of Alaska, different commissioners that the governor appointed. Plus then we had our village people and uh, PTA and, and also uh, unions, etc. We had a motion to hire Mr. Malott. And I, do, I did then what I'd done over the last 50 years, is I counted the votes. And we had five no's. We had, actually, we had six no's. PTA was voting not to hire him. And we had six yeses, for sure. I had one board member that I didn't know how he was going to vote. He wouldn't look. Usually you can tell by their body movement and action. He wouldn't look. He wouldn't do anything. He happened to be a very good friend of U.S. Senator Mike Gravel's. I called a little recess to the meeting, and in those days you could do this. I went next door and I called Senator Gravel. And I told him what the problem was, that I didn't know and I didn't dare bring it to a vote until I knew. And I asked the senator if he could call his friend. And the senator said yes. So I went back into the meeting and immediately when the girl stepped in and told the gentleman that he had a phone call and they said it was important. So he went out and then he came back into the room and in a very strong voice he said, Madam Chairman, I think we've talked enough about this and so I move that we hire Byron Malott. And I knew I had his vote, so we took it to a vote right there and we were able to hire this young, inexperienced gentleman. Byron, after he did a heck of a good job at Rural Cap and leading and helping the people all over the state of Alaska. And he has since then been serving the people of the state of Alaska in one way or the other. And we really appreciate, Byron, what, what you have done. He's still serving us today as Lieutenant Governor. Besides Rural Cap, he was the Mayor of Juneau. He was the Chairman and then the CEO of Sea Alaska. He was the CEO of the Permanent Fund. He worked with Rural Cap on the board. He got to be good friends with 
people like Willie and, and uh, those guys, and he helped us work on getting land claims. Now as our Lieutenant Governors, I want to say it gives me a, a lot of pleasure to use my three Ps, and that is privilege, pride, and pleasure, that I ask you to please welcome the Honorable Lieutenant Governor, Byron I. Malott. I'm going to use this microphone. It seems a bit stronger. Um, you know, 50 years almost coincides, give or take a few years, with the 50 year anniversary of statehood. In 1965, that the the year in which rural cap, or at the time ASCAP, was created, was well, just six years after Alaska became a state. When rural cap, after the name change, became more active, it was nine years after statehood. During those years, land claims uh, was very much underway. The state of Alaska was literally just being organized. The great earthquake of 1964 had happened and Alaska was picking itself up and shaking itself off. The decade just before the 60s the decade of the 1950s, and even, of course, the decades before. But even the decade of the 1950s was a time in which people of color did not have the place in America or even in our state that in many ways we take for granted today some take for granted. But for a broad reach of people of color, the dream of this great country has still to be realized. And that is why it is so special that an institution like Rural Cap is still here a half a century later. I could reminisce all evening as I look around the room at people that I've worked with, but I do want to mention a couple of people. One is John Shively. When I became executive director, I asked him to be my deputy executive director. And to the degree that Rural Cap was successful in its operations during those years, and we had many and were active all across the state, John Shively was crucial to that success. Certainly we had a wonderful staff. Uh, we had uh, folks who worked with us in the regions here in Anchorage all across the state. And John and I have been, been close for many, many years. And he's a very special person to me. Thank you, John, for your service to Rural Cap and to Alaska. I also want to mention, to me, she's still a young lady. She is a young lady. But Pat Jackson, she was, she worked for us, and she was so cute and petite that she was almost a pet. 
<laughs> and and she she uh, wherever she was in the office in any of the programs she just lit up the room and she's done that her entire life Pat for some reason and I think I just mentioned the reason Whenever I think of Rural Cap, I think of you. And thank you so much for being here this evening with your husband, Gordon. <laughs> During those days, Rural Cap was, as an organization, heavily engaged with Head Start and legal services, spinning off CEDC, helping to create AVEC, uh, uh, working on land claims. We were a governmental contracting agency, so we had to be very careful about being involved with lobbying. But we could hold meetings. It was part of our outreach as a community action agency. And to be engaged in those kinds of activities at the time, were what an organization like Rural Cap did. To look back on it from the vantage point of half a century, you realize that those were history-making times. I recall a gentleman named Donald Rumsfeld, whom everyone in this room knows uh, as an American leader, somewhat controversial, depending upon your point of view. But he was the director of OEO in the White House at that time. He had been a Navy fighter pilot and an instructor pilot, had been a congressman already, and had been asked by President Nixon to be the national director of OEO. Some said that his charge was to essentially dismantle the full range of, of Office of Economic Opportunity programs across the country. In any event, he made a visit to Alaska and we flew across the state together. And <coughs> I think he came away, to some degree, a changed person when he saw what we were doing in Alaska, what the reality of the circumstance of Alaska's rural people was. Uh, and I'll never forget one early morning, we had left Nome and we landed in Unalakleet. And it was a beautiful, quiet morning. And we were about in the fourth day of our trip across the state. And Donald Rumsfeld looked at me and he said, Byron, he said, one of the reasons I'm here that I've been dying to ask you is why are all of you folks who work for these poverty agencies mostly Democrats? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, <laughs> The Nixon administration was very much a Republican administration. And we had a wonderful conversation. And in some ways, it has shaped my view of the world of Alaskan political life. And that is, it isn't about party. It's about caring. It's about believing in a vision of an Alaska where every individual's potential is able to be realized. Because pulling together, Governor Walker's phrase, we help every single Alaskan, regardless of their circumstance, to be able to know deep in their heart that this is a place in which their dreams can be realized with some assistance, but mostly with the strength of their own character and the assumption of the sense of responsibility that each of us has ultimately to nurture. And that's what Rural Cap did. 
and does to this day. <clears throat> we had some incredible moments back then. Marlene didn't mention that the governor at the time was Wally Hickel. Uh, and our congressman in Washington, D.C. was uh, Howard Pollock. And, and Howard called me in one day, I was in D.C. And he said, we're friends. Uh, he said, but you're never gonna be director of rural cap. He said, a Democrat will not be a director of rural cap. And again, I'll never forget him saying that to me because to me and the people that I worked with and that I knew were in Anchorage and across the state with this very new organization, it wasn't about that at all. It was, again, about doing what's best for Alaska. And I said to myself then, People can call me what they will, but I'm gonna act as if what I care about most, aside of my family and those that I love, is the state of Alaska. I had the privilege of being there at its birth. I'll have the privilege of living here my entire life, and I want to help in the smallest way possible to make it the best place possible for every single Alaskan. It's that simple. And when I had the opportunity to ultimately create a little history of our own and serve now with Governor Bill Walker, I somehow feel that that opportunity in my life has ultimately been realized. To work with a man who himself says, it's not about partisanship, it's not about ideology, it's not about who gets what, it's all about what's best for Alaska. And not an Alaska that we define, but that we reach out to Alaskans to help define collectively for every single one of us. And let me tell you, in closing, a little secret about the way Governor Walker and I work. When things are going really good, it's the Walker Malott administration. <laughs> when, when he has a bad day or he's really pulling a heavy load that is kind of controversial, I say, Governor, I'm really glad to be part of the Walker administration. <laughs> It is. <laughs> and I think that that says a lot about the kind of Alaska we are still becoming and that we have ultimately yet to realize. But a place that will get there because we are pulling together and because the progress, the change for the better that has come to rural Alaska, recognizing there is still a long way to go, comes from the dedication, the hard work, the leadership, the passion, the vision of so many institutions across the state of which Rural Cap is among the best of examples. So thank you so much for this opportunity.